Good afternoon, or maybe good evening. Who knows what it is? <laughs> but um, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Chris Huntingford onto the channel. Now, I'm assuming probably 99.99% .99 of our Dynamics audience will know who Chris is. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I think they might. <laughs> but uh, anyway, well, really, do you mind introducing yourself and your yeah. job title to LinkedIn? Absolutely. So, <laughs> hey everyone, uh, Chris Huntingford. So, I'm a partner technical architect at Microsoft, also an active community member. So I do loads of work in the Microsoft communities. My job as a partner technical architect or a PTA is really to focus on number one, evangelizing the products of Power Platform and Dynamics 365 to partners. So work with loads of partners, but also really help them build out things like IP and practices and really get them to, you know, expose that really amazing functionality to customers and build out value for them. So that's what I do. Awesome. So obviously you guys wouldn't have benefited it from it, but I can attest to you how amazing Chris is at actually explaining <laughs> this technology. Um, you had a group of us in the room who aren't exactly the most technically minded people, massively engaged with the product. Um, can you just tell us, I know it sounds really, really boring, but can you give us like Monday to Friday, your average yeah, yeah. Monday to Friday, what does that look like? So I'm not going to lie, man. My average Monday <laughs> to Friday is probably like a, a Motley Crue show. So okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So ultimately what I do is um, my calendar's always ram-packed. Like I'm literally jam-packed every day of the week, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. um, but ultimately the goal is really just to focus on the partners. So I do tons with the partners. I really try and visit them as much as I can. I have loads of phone calls. Uh, very technical focused stuff though. So it's not really commercial, like I'm not really great on the com whole commercial side purely because I'm more interested in how to build stuff and how yeah. stuff fits together. Like I keep on going on about Lego, but it's true. Yeah. I, mean, I just think that's what it's, you know, yeah. fundamentally it's all, all around building blocks. So I spend a lot of my time doing that. I do loads of events. So I do loads of like 365 Saturday events, loads of events during the week. So I was at one yesterday uh, where I spoke twice on AI. Um, also tons and tons of like, um, I'd say interactions like this where it's really important that you know we work with the, the rest of the community and the rest of the partner base and customer base to understand why Power Platform and Dynamics are so important. And I keep on saying it, it needs to be viewed as a movement rather than just like a product because yeah. it's so easy to provide value to everyone around you if you understand why the movements are so important. Well, exactly. I mean, so also you wouldn't have benefited from this earlier, but we were sort of just sat out having a coffee and sort of just describing, okay, so we can talk about the, the technical implementations and how this all fits together till the cows come home, but the beauty of the Power Platform and the beauty of how these apps work is that, as we're saying, there's amazing stories from people who aren't technically minded at all, and as a new, uh, new term I learned today, citizen developer, yeah, I'm going to be yeah. on the lookout for you guys, <laughs> um, but citizen developers is people who have an idea they know their industry, they know what they need, and yet this product has come in and said, okay, I'm gonna give you the building blocks for you to come in with these ideas and build an amazing application that's gonna Spot on. Yeah. It's gonna absolutely transform a business. And then as I say, these people who don't have an IT background, all of a sudden, five years later, yeah. you know, businesses are coming to them and going like, <laughs> oh, can you, can you help me build, a, uh, yeah. you know? Um, is it all right if we share like maybe one or two examples yeah. of those kind of guys that we were talking about earlier? Sure, so it's actually interesting because a lot of them are my friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man, so it's crazy. Yeah. Hey guys. Hi mum. So, <laughs> one of the guys I want to chat to you about, you know, uh, is a chap called Martin Lee who works for Autoglass. Yeah. Unbelievable guy. Uh, he, he met the mayor recently. Yeah. How crazy is that? Because he builds apps. But, you yeah. know, he started off um, doing like inspections with vehicles and things and he had an idea and he's absolutely, absolutely, he's you know, <laughs> growing the whole landscape within his business. He's moved off from just this guy that was you know, working with windscreens to somebody that really, really has promoted, you know, like this digital transformation in their business. Yeah. And I think it's a phenomenal story. One of the other ones I loved was um, Summit. So Summit was at Heathrow, well he still is at Heathrow, and um, he was do, he was working in security and building applications there just basically with canvas apps, right? Like some really wow. basic applications that, you know, right now seem simple, but it's how he grew and changed his mindset so instead of, of thinking like, okay, I'm gonna put data in a place and we're gonna access it there, he was going, I have a problem I need to solve. How do I use this application stack to solve that problem? Yeah. And he is the guy, he was the guy closest to the problem, therefore the right guy to solve the problem. Yeah, that's amazing like real world examples. And as I was saying to you earlier, so one of, my, uh, one of the things that really struck a chord with me in terms of how this, you know, the real end uses of this product, sort of like field service, when I think, so M Hans with a 
a product out in rural Wales, mm. sort of working out, okay, so this person, that basically they can't get to a hospital for their chemotherapy treatment. That's amazing. So, so then, you know, okay, so they're Story kind of like, they're, they're working out, okay, so how do we uh, get, that, get that treatment to them? It's yeah. through articulated lawyers with specialised chemotherapy units that will go out into the community. But then, obviously, we can all sit around on a map and kind of go, okay, great, so we think we should place it here or here or here. But actually, what can you do with data? You can take that data and you can learn from it, you can analyze it and go, actually, just so you know, we worked out that with, we would probably get 80% fill rate if we placed it here. Exactly, because we yeah. know from all you know, past experience. Mm -hmm. And it's those kind of real world things. And I sort of, it's that interaction, I think, that's, that gets us all enthused about the product. And, and how you've all sort of gone out into the community, as I said, it's a community movement, because you know, we can all talk about the technicalities, but that's what really brings it home to us. I think. On a, going back to sort of, let's say, I think a lot of us here obviously come to this video for you know, the candidate piece. How can we upskill ourselves in the marketplace? And so if we've already said, if we're taking someone who's a, a sort of, take, take like a citizen developer who's yeah. have that really good idea and they've built their first app, how would you suggest that they then start, you know, they've got a bit of a, uh, a taste for it, they want to get better at developing. <laughs> but how do, yeah, yeah, exactly, right? They've got a taste for it. So how do they, how would you suggest that they then take that idea and sort of, I suppose, sort of technically inform themselves around that idea yeah. going forward. Okay, so I literally, you know that I'm gonna, you know exactly what I'm gonna yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hammer this point home every single time. Data, number one thing, data. Let me tell you why. Because when you have data, you can do amazing things. Like the story you just told me around the field services piece. Yeah. When you have data, you can do incredibly, incredibly amazing things. You can apply AI, you can apply process, you can apply automation, you can apply logic, you can apply creativity, yeah. which is really key. So if you think about the fact that I've given you a bunch of data, what are you gonna do with that data? Well, if you give me information, you're giving me basically the ability to create something. And that's what I love about the fact that with the citizen developer movement, yeah. what they don't know that they're doing is they're creating the ability for other people to do amazing creative things, yeah. right? So. What I would say is learn about the data first. Data is the number one most important thing. The example I gave you earlier, you know, if you've got a car, a brand spanking new car, you're never just gonna leave it in the middle of a park or on the road, right? You know why, because it's important, it's your car, man. <laughs> if, a, if a bird, you know, does something filthy on your car, you know, you're quite cross, you're gonna clean it all up immediately. Data's like you're that car, man. You've gotta look after it and you've gotta treat it with respect. And I think when, from a citizen developer, often it's not obvious that the data is the key piece. So what I would do is, once you've built out your amazing applications and automations, start thinking about where your data needs to live. It must be secure. It must be available for others to use, right? Yeah. A centralized data repository that's secure. Number one, you don't leave your car unlocked, right? <laughs> Especially in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> number two, right? It must be compliance. Yeah. You must have the ability to apply compliance. And number three, governance understand what's actually happening and put rules in to make sure that stuff doesn't break. Once you've done that, your data secure. Imagine the, you can build more apps. You're yeah. just creating more opportunity for yourself. And like, you know, we were talking about it earlier where you don't have to be an IT genius to do this. Like, I do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really key to understand that. I mean, we need the creative mindset here to understand yeah. that, you know, these apps need to be built. So I would say, First data, then, you know, really build on the mindset you've got already. So if you're somebody that's a painter or somebody that does archaeology or an astronomer or somebody that just, you know, sweeps the floors or puts deck chairs in or what doesn't matter, right? The important thing is that you create. Yeah. It's the example is Lego. I keep on using it, but, you know, with my kids, I pull the Lego out on the floor and we don't know what we're building some of the time. We just build. Yeah. And that's key. Just keep on building and keep on creating. Those are the skills you need. So Chris, I don't want it to feel like we've yeah. staged this, but I believe you might want to ask me a question. But I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually, okay. I actually do, and, and you know, we, we've, we've kind of spoken about it really lightly. Yeah. One of the things I want to understand is that you know I work with tons of partners, and there is a gap in skills in the UK. Yeah. Right now, we need people of all types that understand the Power Platform and want to understand the Power Platform. Yeah. So I would say, from your perspective, what's your take on that from a recruitment point of view? I think we have to go to different areas than we've normally done in the past. Um, I think in terms of, and this goes for our partners and our end-use customers as well, it's all well and good having 
Barry, who's yeah. done 22 implementations, and, it, and he's a safe pair of hands, and he's worked with the core elements of Dynamics for a long period of time. Exactly. But in terms of, as we say, getting into these areas where I think, uh, this is just my own sort of silly uh, impression of power apps, but it is the glue and the thing that make, takes what is a very sort of set core set of apps and actually goes, right, we're going to take this out into your business and make it work for you. Yeah. And in terms of the people who are going to be able to do that, I don't think they're necessarily all going to come from Barry, who's done 22 implementations. We need to go out and be open to other areas. And, that's, yes. and the whole sort of thing around sort of, the, there's the whole reason the common data model is that we're embracing people from Oracle, from SAP, from sorry, SAP. I know, <laughs> I, know, I know people are very funny about it. So SAP <laughs> and Adobe, but we have to be, instead of being sort of, and yes, it's a wonderful community within mm. Dynamics, I think, and I've found that massively in sort of like my, just yeah. starting my learning journey, people going, it's all right, we're going to help you, but we also need to be open. Um, and I'd say there's very few people, there's this one really top project manager, I'm not going to name Bob, but who, who literally he go, does Salesforce project, goes back to Dynamics. It's amazing. Salesforce. And yeah. it's, but, and as you say, it's because he understands data and he understands the value of it and what he's, basically his job is to, you know, is to be the conduit to make that data work for that business. Spot on, yeah. So I think from our sort of perspective moving forward is, yes, we're, don't get me wrong, we're, we're very welcoming of the barriers of the world who've done a lot in dynamics, but as this product grows out, as it is, and the projected growth, especially with the power apps, obviously, it's massive. It's huge. So we are not going to, and for partners and end users alike, we need to be open to the amazing amount of talent that is elsewhere. And as you were saying, for example, someone who's going to be, who's fantastic at building a UI um, from... You know, sort of baggy shorts only. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> baggy but, shorts. Yeah, but yeah, in sh shortage. <laughs> we don't stereotype. Yeah. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> we really but, socialize. <laughs> but it's being open to these kind of people and welcoming them into this into the Microsoft tech stack. That's where yep. you know we we really do need to to, to get to that point. We Otherwise, do, yeah. we're sort of you know if we if we don't change, does the results aren't going to change? Exactly. So that would be my rather long. Uh, yeah. Um, resulting answer to that but that I think I that's could, yeah. that's that's where that's where we need to go with it um, and I think it's through interaction with you know not funny, so, someone like yourself who's a leader in the community oh, sort thanks. of like saying right this is how this is what we need mm. all right we're going to go out there and we're going to and properly sell this solution to people so but uh, you know I think I'm going to wrap it up there <laughs> and just say massive thanks for <laughs> Thank coming in so man. Thank you so much my cheers friend. man it's, it's a real pleasure it. yeah cool. cheers